there. We have a very special presentation for you today because we've got Nathan Fox, Jody LeHup, and we are, well, I'm Henry, that's Kristen. And uh, we're talking about Weatherman today, which is uh, a lovely little tale from Image Comics. And I say lovely because it's a delight to read, but it's not exactly like all, I mean, it's, I'm gonna make a sunshine and rainbows joke here, but it's really not. Um, what can you guys tell us? It's more fun if you tell them. Uh, tell us about Weatherman, about the story so far. Uh, cool, yeah, so the, um, this is volume two, and the general gist of the concept is that um, it takes place in the far future. Uh, Earth's been destroyed by the worst terrorist attack in human history, and all that's left of humanity are now living on terraform Mars. Uh, and, um, all those folks are angry um, and sad. I don't know why. I know, exactly, <laughs> yeah. right, yeah. Earth's not that great. They're still, yeah. they're, they're grief-stricken and they're trying to understand what happened and, and they're afraid of another attack because the people that did it are still out there. So then we're introduced to this character, Nathan Bright, who's like a fun-loving little weatherman. Um, he's got a really cool girlfriend and a really great job and... A really cool dog. Really cool dog, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> Sweetest thing. I know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For sure, absolutely. Uh, but then he suddenly finds himself accused of carrying out or, or being party to this attack. Of course, he's like, that's crazy. I have nothing to do with that. Just a weatherman. I, just a weatherman. <laughs> <laughs> See you on your commutes every morning. Like, it, you got the wrong guy. Problem is, is there's a giant hole in Nathan's memory and he can't actually say if he did it or not. So he's forced on the run, like totally unprepared for life as the galaxy's most wanted. Um, uh, and uh, on a journey to find the truth and uh, hopefully the key to stopping a second mass attack. That's the probably that's the short version of okay. the general gist of the series. Yeah. So you don't want to have the apocalypse happen twice, is what you're telling me, right? Yeah, I think <laughs> that, you'd like that to would avoid be bad. that if yeah. possible. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, uh, I have a, a question for you guys. Yeah. So the main character Nathan. Um, is super enjoyable. Mm. Uh, he's a super quirky guy, he's very entertaining. Um, whoever your local weatherman is, he's not as cool as this guy. <laughs> and really wish um, that he was your weather guy for all the hijinks. So what made you settle on giving him a career of a weatherman? Because um, it's kind of an oddball thing, but you did a really great job of making it seem cool and I'm, I'm sort of curious if it was like your dream job as a kid and you were like, I'm going to make this look really cool. No, I, I think it was, um, you know, I had a very, very, very long time ago, well before I was writing this book, I came up with the idea for this character that was uh, in, the, in the context of like a crime fiction story or something where that was a, but it was a weatherman who was all finger guns and smiles and jokes in front of the camera but then was like struggling and suffering in some way off camera. Um, and why it was a weatherman, I, I don't know. I think, I think there's something interesting to me about um, that person who delivers the weather who you just never think of as being important. Right. <laughs> um, and then all of a sudden you have you know, a series where he's extremely important uh, for a variety of reasons. So. So kind of like looking at it like uh, yeah. the person you might not give any mind to. That's right. Maybe yeah. you all should sudden, a little bit more. <laughs> all of a sudden being, yeah, well, sort of, yeah. I mean, it's, it's not like he's like, you should have paid attention to me. You know what I mean? It's not, it's not like that. But he does play a very central role to the larger, much larger story. So now, I guess it's the short version. Just because I feel like there aren't too many famous weathermen, I got to go with something that springs to mind. Um, how many times did you watch Groundhog Day when you were thinking about <laughs> oh, man. I, I, not in not in preparation for this, but I've seen it a million times, yeah. and you can, probably can't help but you know pull a little bit of inspiration from right. an amazing movie. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's one of my favorites. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That's a that's a good pull for sure. Yeah, love that movie. So what? Uh, once you, you knew you got a weatherman, Nathan, how did you? Uh, well, it's not yourself. You're dr Nathan drawing Nathan. <laughs> yeah. Just, Cosmic coincidence there. Uh, <laughs> what kind of inspired your design? Because you get to, I mean, this is crazy. You get to write, oh yeah, it's post-apocalyptic world, whatever. Oh yeah. Crowds. And you're like, oh god, what do I do? Yeah, totally, yeah. yeah, bring the crowds. Bring yeah. all crowds. <laughs> it's all crowds. Super, super fan favorite. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, I uh, we worked really tightly together, and I think uh, uh, having uh, quite a bit of time in production when we first got started mm -hmm. uh, really allowed for a lot of cultivation and development. Uh, and also too, I mean, the, however humble you may be, right? Like the, the writing on this is, is amazing. 
So even just coming up with uh, the characters in the world, I mean, there was a lot of a lot of things I think we have in common in terms of interests and influences. Mm -hmm. So like right off the bat, I think we we clicked immediately uh, and definitely shared uh, a collective interest in developing all this. So when it came to the characters, I think we we both brought quite a lot to who they are right. uh, and how they turned up and just. After cultivation and wrapping, and you know, many many hours on the phone, uh, and you know, collaborating and chatting and going back and forth on evolution, like Nathan just kind of naturally evolved based off of the original design that we kind of we yeah. kind of nailed immediately with Cross. Right. I think we had we had a really clear vision of of her and, and who she was, um, and and why she needed to be who she needed to be, and then bouncing off of her and, and evolution of Nathan, just kind of. Kind of organically happened, uh, you know, with about three or four iterations yeah. uh, of really kind of trying to solidify his uh, visual characteristics to really not only personify but you know present the character that I think we fell in love with, mm -hmm. and we knew we wanted to see through to the end that would have quite a quite a, uh, a few surprises as well as a lot of uh, you know comedy and suspense and, and diversity and flexibility within the story right. to be who he needed to be. Uh, and and you know and have very distinct silhouettes. Everybody really kind of houses and maintains you know who they are and their personality throughout the narration of the story. See, that's a great phrase that I love hearing is the distinct silhouettes. Because yeah. I know that's always like one of those core elements of a character design is yeah. that like if you can remove all these elements but you still know who they are. Mm -hmm. That means to succeed, and uh, you definitely do here because you got some wild characters. Yeah, it started as a pompadour, and then it just like. Calvin and Hobbes did so, yes. <laughs> right? And then, and I, I didn't realize. Actually, I, I talked to students about this today because we we're doing character design, and, mm -hmm. and uh, I was going through through Calvin and Hobbes. I was going, yeah, it totally made sense. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, I uh, I really enjoy um, the way that the storytelling and the art match up with each other, because mm -hmm. um, the main character has like this. Um, you know, like a goofy, casual sort of uh, public face, mm -hmm. and the brightness and the colors and sort of really matches that quite nicely. Was that something you kind of did intentionally? Were you like, I want it to be bright and you know, and fun looking um, yeah, to sort yeah. of match that? Absolutely, yeah. actually, uh, we, that was definitely something very important to us early on. We knew we wanted because the book is a. Uh, it's tonally very diverse, right? Mm -hmm. So it can be very dramatic and intense, but it can also be really light and fun and funny. Right. Um, but uh, I think that, you know, we wanted to, to, we wanted the book to have, you know, a bright, colorful uh, palette um, to sort of, uh, you know, reinforce those, the energy of it all. Yes. Also, I mean, Nathan's yeah. art itself, you know, has so much energy. Yes. Um, but we didn't want to work against that. We wanted to lean into that, and uh, give and it gives the book, I think, a lot of forward momentum and helps balance out um, the times when we do go to some grim places. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It still feels uh, like it has a good mix of flavors. It's yeah. like a great Sunday. You know, yeah, <laughs> like yeah, it's right. just. Yeah. Yeah, and I and I think I think collaborating with you know Dave and now Moreno, yeah. right? Like uh, that. That kind of mastery and shared narrative color use, right? Like everybody's kind of bringing some some story aspect to it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I guess in the storytelling, that was one thing we really wanted to maintain was, you know, when when we sat down to do this, like this was this story is really important, you know, to us. And, and most definitely, like you know, my first real jump into uh, into kind of image and career of you know development and the investment that we were putting into it all and and how. Our vision of what we wanted it to be, you know, we really wanted it to be like a full meal kind of comics situation for us. Right. And uh, that we wanted to really put the story first, so that really, really helped amplify and really hone in and focus on how do we really want to present this, and what would, what would we really want to see that we could make that we would yank off the stands and kind of scream, you know, scream itself to the audience, like you know. I'm here! Yeah, that's so, what it's, I mean, look at this. This yeah. is, I don't know if you guys uh, can see how gorgeous this cover is and how lovely it matches in <laughs> both covers. <laughs> both covers. Uh, yeah, no, so it's interesting that you use a food metaphor because like, we use that a lot as well. I was really? going yeah. yeah. to ask about that. You say the yeah. meal thing, but yeah. obviously I can't remember. Yeah, it is on the variant as well. Yeah. Of course, there's a lot of food in the book as well. Uh, yeah. 
Is there a reason that you gave a uh, good old Nathan such a ravenous appetite um. for destruction? <laughs> <laughs> well, he and I share that in name. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I think so. I mean, I, the, Nathan and I are both big fans of food. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and Nate Fox, all of us. Yeah. Um, but uh, no, I think that's something that you know I really l- responded to watching a lot of like Korean crime cinema. Stuff okay. Like that, where they always, always take time to include um, a meal or food or eating, um, and uh, I love that, right? Yeah, because it's kind of like a, a slowdown moment in a good way. Um, there's something very sort of spiritual and familial about it. Mm-hmm. Um, particularly when you're dealing with a cast of characters that are sort of thrown into a situation. Um, and uh, we just really love that. And we wanted to uh, reflect that in the book. And we did. So, yeah. what's your favorite meal you've had to draw? Uh, or what do you want to draw? <laughs> do you want like a nice lasagna? I want a crown. <laughs> I mean, we got a lot of Chinese food in this. <laughs> No, I mean there there are some there's some pretty hearty meals coming. Sure. <laughs> uh, and I think to date those are my favorite, which are in volume two. Okay. Uh, so stay tuned. But stay the, tuned. But you know, honestly, you know, working and designing frugal noodles is part of part of the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I mean, I think we we both fell in love with that really fast. And uh, you know, that scene with him and Cross on that. Uh, on that first fake date that we see, right, right, that you know she's kind of teasing him along, uh, you know, doing doing the reconnaissance that she used to do uh, in the first volume. That you know that was really a great introduction, and Sadie's there enjoying the meal too. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. You know, there, there's something, and I, I agree, same thing. Like uh, any any time there's an opportunity to really uh, be human, right, and kind of have that vulnerable. I mean, there's exactly. nothing more vulnerable and um, you know open than literally eating in front and with somebody, right? That's true. Uh, and also, too, like nothing more personal than kind of like eating alone. They say there's uh, the only, what, eating food is the only sincere love, you know, or mm. something. Oh, something yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I know I'm like bumbling that quote. <laughs> can't remember the, quote, the exact quote. Um, yeah. But yeah, how it connects us and how it's, it's such a part of being human and... Right, you know. yeah. because, because uh, I'm glad we brought that up too, is because you know, that was something that was very, very important to us when putting the book together, is that it always comes back to the humanity of the characters. Mm-hmm. A lot of science fiction gets so in love with its own high concept and world yes. and lore, and, um, and that stuff can be very interesting, um, but it's not as compelling. And so we always wanted to come back to just like the humanity of everything. It's all about the relationships, it's all about people and seeing people for who they are and all that kind of stuff. So food helps to reinforce that. Mm-hmm. Very. I agree. Yeah. And I would even go as far to say that the most iconic, successful sci-fi stories are the ones that do focus on the characters rather than, mm-hmm. you know, as the priority over the world building. Right. Yeah. Where it becomes, you know, just off the top of my head, like uh, you know, Firefly mm-hmm. and Star Wars, you know. Yeah. Star Wars wouldn't be Star Wars without Luke and Han and Ray. And the blue milk. <laughs> and the blue milk. And, and the food. <laughs> but not as much, you know? You could take all that no, stuff out. It would still feel... Yeah. Uh, I was always jealous of that scene. I was like, well, I want breakfast to be like that. <laughs> Where can I get that? Uh, well, you gotta find the bright center of the universe I and know, find right? the, the point farthest from the <laughs> <laughs> so we're obviously this is volume two of the series. Mm-hmm. We're we're back for more. What should we be excited for? If you if you read one, if you're in you're into it now, you're yeah. immersed in the world. Totally. Um, uh oh, what are you in for? Uh, well, things are going to get um, much more intense um, as opposed to less intense. For <laughs> so uh, what we have in volume two is um, obviously we had this big calamity that happened, catastrophe that happened on Earth, and all these right. people were killed, billions of people died. Um, and you know. but exactly, yeah. yeah. But what, and so now, um, from the events of volume one, you know, our crew, um, Nathan Cross. Um, and their compatriots are now have to journey to Earth, back to the scene of the crime, mm-hmm. where this all happened. And we intentionally sort of played a coy in Volume 1 about what really happened over there. Mm-hmm. Um, and in Volume 2, you're really going to, you know, the crew's really going to sort of come face to face with what exactly went down. Um, and that's going to put them into, um, create a whole lot of emotional conflicts for them. Um, sort of bearing witness to the aftermath, who's left behind, if anybody, what's left behind. Um, I will say, though, that, though, that they are, um, Earth, Earth is definitely not as lifeless as they 
uh, as you think it is. Okay, so, yes. so there is, there's still some there fast food joints open. <laughs> They've still got McDonald's. <laughs> They're oh. still working. They didn't yeah. Make, yeah, no, yeah. The managers are brutal. They won't let them yeah. Yeah. Um, But uh, but our, our title character, Nathan Bride, is an amnesiac. Like I mentioned before, he doesn't remember having done all this. What we discover in point one is that his old memory is, is uh, stored on a hard drive. Right. Okay. That Cross um, now needs to acquire so that they can get the intel that she needs to stop the second mass attack from happening. What she fears is going to happen. Um, so, uh, in the course of trying to hunt that down on Earth, they come into conflict with all kinds of stuff. Nonsense. Monsters. Chaos. Yeah. Monster. Okay, that's literal cool. monsters. Literal monsters. Cool. Demons from the past. Um, literal demons. Kind of <laughs> no, no, for real. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> no, it's, it's, all right. It's doom. It's really. They're cool. walking on doom, basically. Uh, kind of, except yeah. minus the hell part. Of it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But, um, that's actually not. Far Oh, okay. That makes me really curious and excited. It, it's really wild, and of course, it's sort of you have made the Night the Brett character who's you know doesn't remember having done it. So then he has to sort of be like, well, am I? And of course, you have these questions of like, is he still responsible? You know, how much is on him to make up for what came before? Okay. Um, and you know, of course, everyone around him hates him. You know, and so he's kind of like a drowning man, just trying to meet somebody to see him as a as, as, as this new person that he claims to be, yeah. and uh, it's tough, so, anyway. Yeah. It's but, tough in real life, with, it would just, like, regular right. relationships, yeah. rather than, you know, like, apocalyptic right. Uh, right. Right. <laughs> states. So, so you have a lot of conflicts with all the characters, internally, externally, um, and uh, a lot going on, so, but yeah, it's all of a piece, this is the, the sort of the escalation from volume one, and um, it's going to be one of them, so be ready for it. Cool. Yeah. So, what is the one thing that you had to have in this book to draw? Like artistically, was there anything that you were like, I need, because you just said monsters, we're talking about food, we're talking about sci-fi worlds. Was there anything that was like, I really want to draw this thing? Well, I mean, can we talk about the ending? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, there are, the, there are these two characters that I've been waiting and dying to get to. Okay. That I that we fell in love with I think, yeah, early on. Absolutely. Uh, and then as soon as the visual development started happening with that, it was like, man, <laughs> <laughs> we we got to do yeah. more with this. And, okay. Uh, yeah. We so, introduced to them in issue two. Yeah. So well, hey, Pace and Pickles are, are the real deal. I deal-deal. love their name, and it's yeah. food again. Okay. And they're. Uh, they they are going to be a screen. Okay. Yeah, they're fun. Yeah. It's awesome. That's no, no. super awesome. All right. Well, I other than that, 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 you're not getting anything. No. <laughs> I know. That was good. That was a good. Yeah. It was a snack. It was a snack. A snack. A snack. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. First, it was a first course. Yeah. 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 Um, so just a, a bit of an odd question for you. Let's go. But if you had to sit down and share an actual meal with the characters from this book. Where would you take them out in New York City? Like uh, Nathan Bright comes to New York City, you can mm. take them to one place to eat. Where Where are you going? What are you sharing with them? I think we take. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Plug it. Well, I I think mean, ramen would be amazing. Uh, and they have fantastic murals up in their restaurants, by the way. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, the the one on the west side. What was that one? We go down to we ate with bass there. Toto. Oh uh, yes. Toto Rama yeah. is a pretty hot spot. Taking notes Toto over here. Yeah. 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 I am quite yeah. hungry. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I mean, definitely noodles makes seems to make yeah. sense, right? Yeah. Yeah. He seems like a noodle guy. Yeah, Jim Jim yeah. Ramen on 120. He loves, he yeah. loves anything. Nathan's the kind of guy who's like, he loves what you're into. <laughs> yeah. Whatever you're into, like he's all about. Like, I totally and he's right that, totally man. genuine about it. Like he's he's like genuinely pumped about life. Yeah. He, the thing about Nathan that's kind of wild is that he he's just undepressible. Like yeah. You, you cannot suppress him. You know what I mean? He's going to be this joyful light, and it frustrates people. <laughs> Was that uh, something like intentional that you wanted to add in because he, you know, doesn't have any memory of his past? Is that? Is that oh. part of what makes him so lighthearted, or is that just... There's definitely... Is? You're going to learn a lot more about all of that as the story goes, and like yeah. why that is and where it comes from. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'll just say that. Yeah, no spoilers. No, 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 yeah. I, 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 I'm enjoying it a lot. It's so definitely I'm by design, uh, for sure. Yeah. But, um, 
Yeah, I think I think anybody who was really interested and wanted to know more, from, especially from the first arc of who everybody is, where you know the hints of where things are coming from, you know, the kind of their motivations, and then get to know them a little bit more. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely, volume two is going to be really exciting. Okay. Uh, okay and, volume three. and quite crazy awesome. And he said three. All the same. Maybe. Four. <laughs> Might have said three. Maybe. <laughs> Well, cool. Well, uh, thank you guys for taking the time to talk to us about this and making oh, yeah. us really hungry. What was the name of the noodle shop <laughs> that we're going to immediately after this? Oh, they uh, gave us like four. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah really. Like well, no, we, get, we, got, we got three spots to hit, man. Okay. So, Ivan, Ivan, Jen, and Toto Ramen. Okay. Toto Ramen, yeah. And then there's the other one, that I can't remember the name of it now. Oh, they're gonna be mad when they see you. Yeah, like, oh, we have this interview. There's a ton of good karma yeah. spots. And then, <laughs> another, another. Uh, yeah, but, si but same thing. Like you, you can literally go from Mr. Softy Nathan to be like, yes, <laughs> totally. Yeah, Let's yeah, do yeah. this. <laughs> yeah. What is Softy? <laughs> oh my goodness. That sounds so fantastic. You know, I mean, he would kind of, he would go into it. Yeah. Well, I very cool. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, everybody watching us at home, you know, make sure that you pick up the weatherman. Issue number one, and if you haven't already read volume the, two, well, volume two number, I was going to say, if you haven't already read volume one, number one, two, three, four, five, six, do that. It's a delight. It's so much fun. You guys are a delight, and you're so much fun. And uh, they're also very kind, and they're going to be signing some books for us right now. So keep an eye out for that in store and online at midtowncomics.com, and you can find the link in the description. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate it. Thank you.